hey guys what is good welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here my name is Yanni. so guys today we're going to speak about karma yes karma a word that gets thrown around very loosely all the time i think people like to throw this word around and i don't really think people understand um the true essence of what karma is so in this video i want to touch on karmic cycles karmic depths karmic loops understanding what's karmic in your own life understanding where your karmic debts are understanding the, the karmic loops that you're facing and why and understand how to break karmic cycles understand how to clear some of your own karma and this topic comes under some of the psycho spiritual stuff that i want to cover on this channel um, and if you're not familiar with psycho spirituality psycho spirituality is basically the amalgamation of the psyche the mind and the spirit um it's kind of just you know understanding both of them and how they work together and how they kind of um, are an amalgamation of each other you know it's the the development of your mind kind of determines how strong your spirit is and how far your spirit grows and evolve and it's just a perfect blend of understanding the psyche the mind um, and the spirit you know in terms of the wider things of um, the universe the mysteries of the universe um, and to be fair everything in the universe spawns from the mind you know all is mental we live in a very mental world so we hear the term karma thrown around a lot usually with a negative connotation but in a nutshell basically in buddhism and hinduism karma is basically um, a sum of someone's action in their previous existence and in their current existence which is going to determine their fate for the future for their future experiences and existence because within both buddhism and hinduism they believe in reincarnation so they believe that the cycle of life goes like this it goes round and round energy doesn't die it changes shape it changes form and it just keeps doing that that's the kind of um, everlasting life that the bible spoke of um so this vessel it rots it decays but the consciousness the awareness within this vessel it takes another shape it takes another um existence another form and the things i do now in this current state and in my previous state is going to determine the type of experiences and the type of things i will experience in my future so basically that's what karma is and that's just that's good and bad it's not just bad things and people always use karma like oh karma is going to get you like it's a bad thing there's good karma there's bad karma it's basically the universe way of kind of you know checks and balances basically um so whatever you did previously in your previous life or what you're doing in your current life is going to determine um what you experience in your future existence or your future life and that in a nutshell is basically what karma is so it's a universe way of doing checks and balances so the fundamental laws of karma is every action has a reaction and a consequence no good deed goes unnoticed no bad deed goes unpunished and do unto others as you you will have others do to you or judge others with the very same measurement that you would like them to judge you with those are like the basic principles of karma right so so you can understand karmic debts and you know your own karmic debts within your family or your own life you have to really understand karma like for instance um say you went into a store and you bought something and I don't know the cashier gave you back a hundred dollar change when she was probably supposed to give you back 20. you walked out that store right and you're thinking oh my god i've just won you know um she gave me this money she didn't realize and you walked off with that money there's a consequence for that you may feel you have won in that moment but for every action there is a reaction you know so how karma will play out in that instance is yes you will get to walk off with that hundred dollars right but then down the line you lose your purse and you've lost five hundred dollars that's the consequence that's how it works whereas had you maybe pointed out to the cashier that look you've given me the wrong change gave her the money back that the universe would reward you for that in another way maybe you would have gone to like i don't know a fun fair or something and win a jackpot of i don't know five hundred dollars or something like that this is how karma unfold in a lot of our lives 
this is why people often say what goes around comes around because we think that time is linear like there's past present future time is not linear time is cyclical time goes around like that what goes around will come around if you notice atoms and electrons are in the shape of circles if two lines travel the opposite way they will eventually meet time is a cyclical thing everything moves in a cyclical nature um, if you observe nature everything moves like that it moves in circles so what you're doing will come back around on you what your family did in the past what you did in the past it will come back on you on your generations to come you know and this is the basis of karmic debts this is how people incur karmic debts it's based on what happened within your bloodline um, in your ancestry from your mother's your mother's side your father's side it's based on your own actions in previous life it determines what's happening in your life right now i'm gonna i'm gonna help you to identify that and to understand that our lives are a circle of experiences that keeps recycling itself and appearing in generations and generations and generations and this is what people call generational curses it will keep appearing in a cyclical way generation after generation until someone heal it until someone pay the karmic debts for it until someone master it you can understand the karma that's within your lineage your family and your bloodline based on your lived experience based on the things that you're struggling with based on the things that you excel in the things you find easy the things that come easy to you those are the the wealth of that bloodline those are the spiritual wealth that um that bloodline has kind of accumulated so you can live on that but the things that you're struggling with the things that you keep like you know meeting a dead end into the things you find difficult this is where all your karmic debts are this is the things that was not healed in your bloodline and life will keep bringing it around in a cyclical way generations after generations after generation until you've got a generation that stand up and heal it until you've got a generation that stands up and clear the debt for that karma before you can go back into imbalance you know so karma is kind of like a, a you know how you have like a credit score of good credit bad credit every action you do everything you put out in the universe every action every step you take it's going on your credit your karma credit score of good or bad good or bad and then the universe is keeping score of it and then you have checks and balances checks and balances and then your lived experiences is based on this credit score you know do you have enough spiritual wealth for this or are you spiritually um, in deficit are you spiritually bank bankrupt why you can't make certain things happen why this can't happen for you why that can't happen for you it's all based on your karmic uh, credit score even in the bible it says it it says the sins of the father will be repeated even on to the fourth generation so this simply means that you will pay for the sin and for the actions of everything that your four parents did so your life right now is a result of what they did what they didn't do the wealth they occurred or the debt you carry their debt you carry their sins is on your back and you can see it based on your lived experiences you can see it for where doors are closed in your face you can see it for where you have struggles where you you can't seem to get past a certain threshold or you can see it in areas where you're just blessed and you flourish this is the debt the credit score from your four parents that's been passed down to you so in understanding karmic debts you will understand that it's within your father's and your mother's bloodline um, of what was passed on to you it then determines the level of abundance you may have the level of protection you may have the level of spiritual wealth you may have the level of privileges you may have you know um, so clear and generational karmic debts take work and intentional living you know like you can look in certain lineage or family and you'll see that there's just a theme within that family like I don't know the women a lot of all the women tend to get molested or all the women got pregnant at 16 or there's diabetes or heart conditions or whatever it is there's just a theme within that family that's the generational curses that's been passed on and to break those or to even understand those it takes intentional living it takes understanding 
um, what debt you're in and it's not hard to understand you just look at basically where you're being stuck you look at where you're always meeting your challenges wherever you're always meeting your challenges is the debt you're in it, you wasn't given those kind of you know spiritual wealth or birthrights to carry over so you're gonna have to do work to bring that credit score up so you can clear those things and you can have ease in those things you know um, and life will keep presenting you challenging situation to animate these um, stuff out so you can heal them and this is where I say people life will present you with people who's gonna hurt you and poke you and prod you and give you basically the opportunity to heal what it is that's within your bloodline that needs healing so for instance say I don't know in your one of your parents bloodline maybe one of them was a robber or a thief right and they went around just stealing money from people stealing money from people how that will animate in your lifespan is you will forever have financial problems it's like no matter what you do or how you try um, and you you can't see what you're doing wrong you might live a good life you go to church you might this you might that but you just can't seem to have money and this is because of what your four parents did so that's a karmic debt so they're in debt because they went around and did all this bad deed and it racked up on their karmic credit score now they've passed that sin on to you so now that whatever you try to do financially you just can't seem to make it now we'll go further into how to clear karmic debt um, later on in this video but that's just like an example of how it will animate in your life um, say for instance your dad was a drug dealer you might find that I don't know one generation down the line two three or four generation down the line you have someone who's extremely addicted to drugs and they can't seem to get off it this is how karma animates itself um, you know life shows you through direct experiences by putting the shoe on your feet you know so whatever you do to someone is going to do back to you so you know not to do that you know so people talk a lot about ancestors ancestors but you don't understand you are your ancestors you are your mother's mother's mother mother you know 23 chromosome like she's right here everything that she was in those 23 chromosome it's within you so whatever she did she's facing the consequences of it through you through your lifespan and whatever and it carries on like that throughout the generation so you know this is why a lot of people they don't understand they don't understand spirituality they don't understand spell work you know the things you do to someone you're doing it to yourself essentially because the law of the universe guarantees that what you throw out is like a boomerang and it's going to come straight back at you you know um and that's why in, in the caribbean they'll always say when you're digging a hole dig two dig two because what you do to other you do to self people talk about witchcraft and obia and voodoo and spell don't play with that shit because what you're doing to someone you're essentially doing to you that's how karma works so the amount of karmic debt you have is based on the amount of negative um negative kind of accumulation that you're you know predecessors had before you you know all the things they did that was bad and good you know all of that gets passed on to you so the things you're in debt for is the things where you're meeting the most struggle and the most pushbacks um, in your life but that means you don't have the wealth for it that means you need to accumulate the wealth to be able to have that in your lifetime you have to do some clearing for your ancestors you know so for instance the example i use that someone kept on going around and stealing from people stealing from people now in this lifetime you're struggling to um have money because of how much people your predecessor robbed right so you find that you're struggling you're struggling you're struggling how you will then clear that is by volunteering time volunteering charity give just give give to people who are in less less need than you so it looks a bit like that when it comes to karmic clearing but we'll get into that further you know so in a nutshell basically the blessings or the curses that's on you and your generation is based on your predecessors you know the the the, the things you're struggling with is based on the debt they incurred and you're carrying that because you are them essentially 23 chromosome um from the father and the mother's side so you carry the, that tab and if you want to um, you know clear those things or you know to create better kind of situations and circumstances for your kids or your offspring or your generation to come 
you have to actually do work here in this lifetime it's not just going to disappear and go away you have to actively be aware of it what it is first that you're facing struggle with and you know find ways to clear it by living a bit more intentionally and by seeing when situation appears himself that's challenging you it's presenting you with an opportunity to clear that debt that's what challenges are on the other side of challenges is basically your reward you know if you look at video games the mario game you have to go through the obstacles the challenges to, to move on to another level that's how you level up in life you have to overcome the challenges if you look at the the ghostbusters and the movies like that they have to always fight the demon fight the bogeyman to get to the treasure so essentially when life is pre present presenting you with challenging situation is presenting you with opportunity to clear karma it's presenting you with opportunity to overcome to elevate to clear debt see spiritual wealth and ranking was something i once never used to believe in because i know within this uh spiritual community there's so much like spiritual ego you know people see spirituality as a mean as like oh my god you know i'm aware and i know more than you and da 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 da, da. and i used to just think it was a very ego based thing when people talk about spiritual ranking but the more i understood karma the more i understood that spiritual ranking does exist I see it animate out in my life like I always say to people like I don't know I have a level of protection over me that I can't explain and I can go into so much examples where I give you this where something divine just plays out and I'm like what is that but it's so obvious but I'll get into those another time spiritual ranking is actually a thing because again is based on the work of your ancestors if you had healers in your family shamans in your lineage and that's something that was in my lineage that i didn't really i didn't know but i saw how it animates in my own life that i know that even though there's some bad stuff i might struggle this area i might struggle in that area in this area i'm literally at ease in this area i glide like it's just free it's open the gate it's there for me and that's based on the wealth um and on the deeds of my ancestors before me so i had healers in my lineage i had shamans in my lineage and you know i was having a conversation with a friend and we was just debating going back and forth and you know like i was contesting some things he was saying and you know we were going back and forth and he was saying to me oh you know but there's a lot of things you read and you learn that you teach on the internet and i said to him yes that's true i read a lot and i learn a lot and i pick up a lot but there's also a lot that i know that i have no idea where i know it from I said, that's what your DNA is. Your DNA carries information. And I say this to people all the time. Your DNA carries more than just your, your characteristics, your feature, your hair color. It's like a full photocopy of the people who made you and then the people who made them and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So you've got several ancestors in here. You, you know what I mean? So there's things you do, there's areas you go to in the world, there's food you eat that really awaken that particular ancestor in you that speaks sometimes i speak and I, I like i listen back to myself and i was like wow <laughs> i amaze myself i don't know where some of the stuff is coming from it's like i'm channeling and that's what i was saying to him i was like some of the stuff i do pick up or some of the stuff i'll hear and i'm like i remember that and some of the stuff i get up and i have a knowing and where this knowing comes from i don't know that's essentially what you know um, your DNA is it's information so I'm tapping into ancestors within me I'm tapping into inf information that's within me life lifespan that was within me ancestors who's lived in the forest shamans and healers who were doing things that's within my lineage that I've got one of their chromosome within me you know and it takes a certain kind of environment or it takes us a kind of food or situation to unlock that within me to evoke that within me you know people talk about ancestors 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 you have to know which one to listen to within you because some of them weren't shit some of them were crooks some of them were liars some of them were thieves rapists whatever you don't want to call on all of them and they're all within you they're all within you if you understand genetics and epigenetics you know they're all within you because if you think you're 23 chromosome your mom 23 chromosome your dad they're 23 chromosome their dad they're 23 chromosome their mom and it goes on and on and on so imagine how much is is within you this is why you'll have even see people have baby and i don't know one of the baby comes out with ginger hair or blue eyes and we're looking at the mom and dad and like none of you have ginger hair or blue eyes where did this come from this is how genetic works so 
um, you know, spiritual ranking is a real thing and spiritual wealth and spiritual bankruptcy is actually a real thing. So again, it's based on your predecessors um, and it's not a wise idea to F about with just anyone because you don't know who is who. You know, we see people on the physical but on the spiritual, people do have different ranking. People have accumulated a level of wealth where if you try to attack them a certain way, there's a certain protection that comes around and that repels that attack and you're essentially just damaging yourself. And I've experienced that with me many occasion. You know, so that's one thing I know, that's one area I know whoever was before me, they accumulated some wealth. Like I know there were some healers, there were some warriors, there were some shaman within my lineage. But on the flip side of that, I know that like um, they were issues with um, certain struggles within my lineage that I see in my daily life that I know that, yeah, I'm karmically in debt, I'm karmically you know deficient in those areas like the family structure within my lineage is completely broken like and i've seen that in so much generation within my family and i'm like yeah like that really needs work that really needs repair like we're seriously in debt like that you know so think about the areas in your life you're struggling think about the areas in your life that you excel these are your wealth and these are like where you're kind of like you know in the negative and you it's your deeds that's going to kind of clear these and bring you back you know, into balance. And then even thinking about karmic cycles and karmic loops, right? Have you ever just like, keep meeting on the same situation over and over and over again? Like, same situation, different person. Or you've got an ex-partner that you guys are trapped into just a negative cycle of breaking up, getting back together and breaking up. And it's like a loop. It's like a hamster wheel. You go around like that. That's called a karmic cycle or a karmic loop. And no matter what you do, you're like, how the hell do I break away from this? Or how the hell do I stop this from happening? Every time it happens, you're getting the same result. Like, say someone trigger you and you get angry, you react the same way. And every time you get angry and you react the same way, you start to feel bad immediately afterwards um, because you're like, why can't I change this? Why am I stuck in this cycle? Why am I stuck in this loop? You know, th those are karmic loops. Those are karmic cycle. And again, it's something that you're karmically in debt for. And how you break that is you have to do something different. You have to do something you've never done before to break that cycle. You have to level your consciousness up. You have to level your energy up. You have to take a completely different approach to what the approach you've always been taking. So if you've always um, had an anger outburst within the situation, you have to meet that person with love. Even when that person is pissing you off and you've got no reason to love that person. But if you wanna break that loop, break that cycle, you have to meet them with love and grace. And that's what karmic loops and karmic cycles are in your life. I was in a, I've been in several karmic situations. In fact, I find that most of my past relationships, which are always long-term, I've always been severely karmic. And I attract very possessive men. And then I, we get stuck in a, a, a cycle where it's toxic and we break up and we get back together and we break up and we get back together. And we both know it's toxic and we need to just completely break away and leave each other. But we can't seem to do that. And I can share with you how I kind of broke those and got away from those. Um, and those are what karmic loops and cycles may look like in your life. It doesn't have to be intimate relationship. It could be a relationship with your siblings, your children, your mom, your auntie, whatever. It's just a cycle of something that happens and every time it happens, the outcome is the same. Or sometimes the same situation with different faces, different people. So getting rid of bad karma or breaking karmic loops and cycle requires you to first identify what it is. From you can identify what the cycle is or where the, the debt is, like where you're constantly bucking and just can't seem to get anywhere, there's just a door closing. Acknowledge what that is first, make peace with it, and then think of a plan of action. So for instance, if it's like a financial situation or you just can't seem to hold on to material possession, um, it means you need to give and it's so funny because how to kind of bring your karma into, into balance is doing the complete opposite. So if you don't have money or you can't keep money, you need to give. And it sounds stupid, it's like, what, give, but I don't have, I can't keep. That's what you need to do, go, go and volunteer, go, go do some charity work, 
go give your time to people less of in 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 um need you know give some things to people who don't have that's how you bring that back into balance and give without expectation you know go donate some time to someone go donate some energy to someone if you've got food go donate it to a food bank go don't donate it to homeless people when you don't have you give that's how you bring that into balance i think in um is it hinduism or it could be the sikhs they call this seva seva means that god is in everyone and god is in all things so when you serve others you're serving god people think that it's going into a building and doing all of this no serving god is serving each other even the ugliest god's within them and 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 it shows you that even when we're ugly even when we're horrible if you understand nature if you understand god it does not discriminate have you ever seen an apple tree discriminate and say i'm not going to bear a tree i'm not going to bear fruits for you because you're a murderer it feeds you regardless you know so you give without expectations you donate you serve God by serving other people. That's called seva. So that's a, that's one way of kind of paying karmic debts. It 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 really comes down to what the situation is. Say, for instance, you keep attracting abusive partners. Maybe you in your previous life was an abuser, and now you're put in that situation so you can know and experience what it what it's like to feel abuse, to understand the abuse you you did to people in your past. How will you heal that? How will you forgive that? How will you overcome that? How will you clear that karmic debt? You have compassion for the person. You look at them first as a person and then try to understand why they're the way they are. More than likely they're angry, they're abusive because of how they how they were brought up. Maybe they were abused. Maybe they were neglected. Maybe they, maybe they were abandoned. Maybe they weren't loved. Maybe they don't know any better. Not saying you stay with them. You take you you come out of that situation. You acknowledge it, but instead of walking with the the negative emotions of hate and resentment, you give them grace and you forgive them, and that's how you heal that. See, when people talk about you know, the church and altar and stuff like that, this is the church of God right here. This vessel. This is the church. This is the house of God. The altar is this. This is the altar, and the offerings that I give to this is what I'm giving. So when you're feeding your mind positivity, when you're doing good deeds, when you're eating a certain way, when you're moving a certain way, when you're thinking a certain way, when you're speaking a certain way, it shifts your frequency because all consciousness is, there's lower consciousness, there's higher consciousness. This is what the chakras represent, the lower nature, so the lower three, the higher nature is the higher three. So it's like the basement level is down here and you're moving up into the penthouse, which is here, your connection up here and your crown. So when you can do a 360 on your house of God and the offerings you give to this altar, it changes you on a 360. And this is how you kind of change your frequency, you change your trajectory, you change what you attract to you, you change um, how outcomes are. When you step into your Godhead, your God body, this is how you bring about change. And I feel like this is how I was able to break most of my karmic relationships. I had to step away from them. And I had to forgive those people who I saw that kind of transgress against me. And I had to forgive myself for the part I played in that and for how I reacted or for how I treated them too. And I had to own it and acknowledge it. And I've even apologized. You know, even in time, sometimes like the human part of me is like, they don't deserve an apology. But I was like, no. Like, I'm making peace with this. I'm laying this to rest. I apologise for my part played in it. And I say, I forgive you. I forgive you for your human mistakes. This is bigger than me and you. You know, this is just an instance. This is just a speck of a moment in time. And it's how you heal. You will never heal by harbouring and holding on to hate and negative emotions. You have to see the humanness and the human conditions um, within people. And, and come from a place of deep empathy to see why they're like that. I remember doing, um, when I was studying to be a social worker and in one of my class, um, we were learning about different things. And I remember this one session we had 
and I don't know they were talking about like um, paedophilias and stuff like that and talking about professionalism and attitude and I remember the lady saying that you have to go in there not with a discriminatory attitude to that person who committed that crime but more from a place of trying to understand why and I was just like what no no forget them condemn them to hell blah 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 but on the grander scheme of thing the more you ascend in consciousness and in spirituality you have to think like that you have to think like god you have to think about why is this person like this is this person did who gets up and just wants to be angry who gets up and just wants to be evil and just wants to be a devil i don't think people innately wants to be and do those things but i think circumstances and situations create and bring those things out in, within people and when you start thinking like this you start thinking from your godhead your god consciousness and then you start to see everybody the light within everybody the god within everybody i know that people become victim to their situations their circumstances um and and act as such so when you do all this work on yourself to elevate yourself you know to feed your altar to look after the temple of God you know when you when you do this 360 um, you will realize a lot of things about you will shift your energy will shift your frequency will shift your perception will shift your belief will shift um, check Bruce Lipton video out the biology of belief belief create perception perception creates reality this is why there's so much different reality for, for different people um, and sometimes no matter how you try people just will not understand you because they don't they're not seeing it from your eyes they're not seeing it from your perception from your understanding you know um, and if you understand how potent belief is the mind is a very powerful tool this is why you have the placebo effect you know this is where scientists can give someone real medication and give someone a sugar pill and they both can be healed because they both believe that they're getting medication that's going to heal them that's the power of their belief that's the power of their mind and you've got the nocebo effect you know you go to the doctor and the doctor say oh you did some some tests for us and i think you've got cancer and you go home and you worried yourself into a grave or you worried yourself till you're sick only to go back to the doctor and they'll be like i'm sorry we, mi we mixed up your lab work um it wasn't you actually you're fine that's the power of your mind and when you change this when you level this up when you shift perspective when you start to feed this temple of God nothing but good and positivity and start to see the light everywhere and everyone even the darkest places this is when you will change this is when you create change your whole DNA your whole community of cells within your body will react to this and this is where epigenetics comes in this is this is where you pass this on to your generation this is why I always say to you women it's important to heal before you have kids your state of mind your state of being your your photocopying yourself your nervous system your mind every cell in your body every intricate details of yourself onto your offspring and if you can heal that and repair that like you've put the next generation at an, at an advantage. Like when I look at me, and I even look at my kids, my daughter particularly, when I see how spiritually advanced she is, mentally advanced and aware she is for her age, because of everything I've passed on to her or what I've been teaching her, compared to me, like I've learned this at my big age. She's just 16 and I've, she's got all this already. That's the generation already being upgraded, you know. So I guess just to wrap this video up, karma is based on your good and your bad deeds. No good, no good deeds goes on notice. No bad deeds goes unpunished. Be very intentional in the way you live. When before you do something bad, I know nobody can't just be all good. Think to yourself: Can I karmically afford this? Do I want this to come back around on me or my children? You know, and if it's a no, don't do it. Before you judge someone else, think to yourself, do I want someone else to judge me the same way? 
do I want the same measurement of what I'm judging this person to be measured and judge, judge me the same way? You know, think about the areas that you're getting stuck in life, acknowledge them, make peace with them, think about what can I do to heal this? How do I overcome this? And often you have to factor love, compassion, give, servitude, we're here to serve each other. I don't think people understand that enough in life that nothing here is independent. Everything is interdependent. Everything is here is inter interdependent of each other. We serve God by serving each other. So compassion, forgiveness, understanding, empathy, all of that factors into your healing. And even on a, like a, a health level, if you have a certain kind of illness that's rampant in your family, change the way you eat, even the animals, everything comes into karma, how we dishonor them. Change the way you eat, maybe stop eating animals, maybe you shouldn't eat them. And I feel like this is why, and this is going into another level of psycho-spirituality, I feel like this is why some people struggle, um, but when they eat meat, they become really sick and you know disease infested and stuff, and other people, they're fine. It's all based on karmic disposition. So yeah guys, that's my video on karma. I hope it made sense. Um, if you've got anything to add to this, please drop it in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, subscribe guys, run me up, hit the like button, share with someone who you think you know may enjoy my content and I'll see you again in my next video. Take care guys. Peace.